Kristen Hader is an American multi-instrumentalist, performance artist, and vocalist who releases music under the name Lingua Ignota. She is known for incorporating a wide variety of styles in her work, including noise, classical, and liturgical music. From Latin, Lingua Ignota translates to unknown language and comes from the medieval mystic Hildegard von Bingen. Hildegard received divine inspiration throughout her life in the form of visions, creating a new language in order to express these ideas in a manner as close to godliness as possible. Kristen is attempting to do the same. She compares her shows to exorcisms, feeling absent from her body while performing and leaving herself racked with bruises afterwards. The self-destructive tendencies of these performances become a silent testament of female distress while also serving as an exercise of trauma for Hader. I don't believe in traditional systems of healing that we have in place of trauma. I found that those systems don't work for me at this point. So creating music and putting it in the world has been my only way of finding accountability or trying to draw out accountability or drawing attention to things that have been swept under the rug or invalidated or neglected and then being able to express this anger and the despair and the hopelessness and all the other boiling feelings. Expressing trauma is a key theme throughout Hater's work. Being a survivor of domestic violence, Hader weaponizes art to explore aspects of survivorhood that are not traditionally expressed in today's society. Kristen Hader was born on June 17, 1986 in Del Mar, California. She was brought up in a Catholic family and attended parochial school. She describes feeling like an outcast growing up and never quite fitting the stereotypical Southern California vibe. Amazing Grace was the first song she performed publicly in church choir at the age of nine. Her rendition caused churchgoers to cry, which made Kristen feel like a demon who had done them harm. Her experiences growing up with the church's code of uniformity and morality had a clear effect on her now complicated relationship with religion. Kristen became a hardcore atheist once she transitioned from parochial school to public school, renouncing her previous affiliation that had been pressed on her since birth. Around this time, she also became fascinated with counterculture figures like Kurt Cobain and developed anorexia, which she would go on to struggle with for over a decade. In high school, she went to shows and played in metal bands while performing in small opera productions. These two contrasting environments would play key roles in establishing Hater's sound moving forward. She says in an interview with Vice, that's when my interest in avant-garde electronic music started to blossom. I had developed an interest in DIY abstract music in high school as I got into noise and piecing together how the academic avant-garde and the underground experimental scenes intertwined and responded to each other was really compelling to me. Hader went on to study creative arts in Chicago and in 2016 earned a Master of Fine Arts degree from Brown University. During this time, you can begin to see motifs in Ignota's art that would carry into her future musical career. For her thesis, titled Burn Everything, Trust No One, Kill Yourself, she created a 10,000 page manuscript linking real world examples of misogyny in music with her own personal life. In addition to the manuscript, her interdisciplinary performance included music and a black and white video production with footage of serial killer Alien Wernos and burning buildings. At this point, Kristen was still struggling with an eating disorder and had entered a five-year abusive relationship. She experienced crushing isolation as she slowly began to craft her sound and expose herself to the rich community of experimental music in Providence. This inspired me to abandon academic tenets, to stop obfuscating pain, personal material with technology and critical theory, and to make work that is instead raw and content-focused. Hater released her first album under the name Lingua Ignota on Valentine's Day 2017 through Bandcamp, titled Let the Evil of His his own lips cover him, and all of the proceeds were donated to the National Network to End Domestic Violence. Four months later, Lingua Ignota released the provocatively titled All Bitches Die. The album consists of four murder ballads, loosely inspired by Angela Brown's 1987 book When Battered Women Kill a study of victim violence. Lingua Ignota's third album was released on July 19, 2019, titled Caligula. The perverted, sadistic Roman Emperor is clearly a figure that Kristen is fascinated with, and the title is fitting considering the dramatic nature of early Roman history and the Catholic imagery that she includes throughout the record. On a deeper level, you could say that the Mad Emperor's reign mirrors the abusive cycle. Philo of Alexandria describes the first seven months of Caligula's reign as completely blissful, so history indicates that there was a clear honeymoon phase before he became one of the most notorious leaders of all time. The tracklist features songs with titles such as May Failure your be your noose and spite alone holds me aloft. The juxtaposition she emphasizes is ever present here as she shifts from shrieking about being the throat slitter of the world to quoting the poet Frank O'Hara, all I want is boundless love. This contrast reminded me of how another artist confronted her pain.
When Frida Kahlo was 18, she was in a horrific streetcar accident where her pelvis was impaled by a metal rod, her spine was shattered, and the rest of her body endured multiple additional fractures. She spent the rest of her life trying to recover from this trauma, undergoing over 30 operations to treat the painful injuries. According to Siobhan M. Conaty, part of Kahlo's appeal is that she managed to find ways to work around her fractured and broken body to create powerful works of art that still resonate with viewers today. One of the purest examples of this is Tree of Hope, which she painted the same year she underwent an operation on her spine. In the painting, she depicts two Fridas, one sick and one healthy, sharing the same hospital gurney in a cracked and desolate landscape. The sick Frida, nude and reclining, bears the scars of her recent surgery, whereas the healthy Frida sits regally in her Tijuana dress, casually holding a steel corset in one hand and a flag in the other that reads, Tree of Hope, Stay Strong. Kahlo presents the dualities of her life, light and darkness, the sun and the moon, the broken and the vibrant, living and dying. Although Kahlo's specific struggles are a bit different than haters, the manner in which they both reframe their suffering into grotesque, beautiful works of art and remain uncompromising in their portrayal of the female experience are undeniable. On Caligula, Hater exclaims, If my poison doesn't take you, my dogs will. But on her next album, Sinner Get Ready, she admits, Me and the dogs, we died together. Released on August 7th, 2021, the album was recorded during the pandemic in rural Pennsylvania while Kristen was in the midst of another turbulent relationship. Instead of attempting to outdo her work on Caligula, Hater subverted expectations and remained genuine to what she was experiencing at the time. She again applied her academic research-driven method to songwriting and immersed herself in the lore of the region she found herself secluded in after moving for her ex. She went around to local antique shops and found old Appalachian instruments, from the banjo to the mountain dulcimer, bells, drums, zithers, and local string instruments. I wanted to take these and contort them and subvert them in ways that make them sound painful, she said. They have a specific cultural resonance, a sharpness and angularity and lack of refinement that is really beautiful and wonderful. It does harken back to a certain primitivism in American music making in that area. Hayter said she was attending Al-Anon meetings and working a 12-step program at the time. This is evident in her themes of surrender and acceptance throughout the record. She says, there is victory in Jesus. Being empowered by surrender is a counterintuitive concept, but it is one of the central foundations of the 12-step program. On Caligula, she emphasizes the sharp juxtapositions between genres. Here, she opts for prolonged discomfort through ecclesiastical fanaticism, while still weaponizing tropes of extreme music when necessary. It is an abrasive, unsettling portrait of devotion and betrayal, judgment and consequence, and the production has a rawness to it that is immediately endearing. Still a relatively new artist by industry standards, Lingua Ignota already has a devoted following. Her music deeply resonates with survivors everywhere, and it's reassuring to know I am not the only person to be incredibly moved by this art. I apologize if it appears I skimmed the surface of some subjects. Trauma and domestic abuse are topics I can't even begin to do justice. What I can't speak to is feeling personally inspired by Kristen Hader's music, her story, perseverance, and continued strength in the face of adversity. I just hope this video convinced you to give her a listen. Thanks for watching.